Ah, there we go. It was muted. Whoo. All right. Ah, there we go. Banji gets his own stream. He begged. And what am I supposed to do if he begs? Oh, but this can't be right here. This has got to move. All right, that's going to have to be right there. Ah, the two screens don't work anymore. Oh, you know what? It's that they don't work for the Viper. I'm going to have to set them up for the Viper. Ah, oh, it's annoying. Welcome to the F-16 A-9 Sidewinder training mission. You are at 12,000 feet MSL, 30 nautical miles southwest of your home base, Tusia Air Base. The first steps will be to set up your aircraft for air-to-air -air combat. Okay. When ready to continue, press the space bar. Well, I would like to continue, but first I need to reset my head, apparently. Nope. Oh god. thinks I'm sitting. I'm sitting way higher than I should be. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, Falcon. Hi, Hydra. Hi, Hydra. This panel seems to be dead. Crap. Why is this panel not working? Uh, I once knew a girl with 12 nipples. Seems weird, doesn't it? Oh my god. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that one, to be honest. I don't know how I feel about that. I didn't miss it. I got it. I don't know why it didn't do the the voice. Actually, I don't know why it didn't do the voice. All right, hold on. We got to figure out why.
the fuck? You forget when you first joined my live streams? None of my... My throttle and none of the things are working. None of my shit's working. Why? <gasps> Did I unplug it? Oh, maybe I unplugged it. What's up, Zarza? It's exciting and terrifying. Thanks, everyone. Wait, what? Uh, haven't been here in a minute. Bought a new house. Hey! Congratulations. Hold on. I got to figure out why my shit's not working. All right, that side plugged in, ready to go. Here we go. There we go. Hey. Fuck. Okay. Pippin, you have to get off the chair. Get down. Come on. Get down. Go on. That's my chair. Go on. You have a bed right there. There's a whole bed 
that I bought for you. In fact, there's two beds that I bought for you. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Track IR works. It's centerable. What if he was comfy? I don't care. He's got two beds. I got two beds for him. Two beds. Um, wait, what? My true friends. You know what the worst part is? The absolute worst part about this whole thing is, is Vanji is the one who was like, can you please stream? And he's not even going to show up. That bastard's not even going to show up. I'm gonna need the keyboard, apparently, for the tutorial thing. I don't have near enough desk space, says the man with actually plenty of desk space, but not nearly enough desk space. You know what? I want to, let's change the... Change the wallpapers. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Top Gun music playing and we'll be all set. If it wasn't copyrighted, I would totally play the Top Gun soundtrack while playing. Maybe we'll figure something out uh, when we learn the 14. Maybe when we learn the 14, uh, when we at least start to familiarize ourselves with the 14, we'll, we'll figure out some Top Gunny shit. No crashes. No crashes, okay? No crashes. We got ourselves a joystick right here. The joystick's right here, by the way. So if you see me doing this a lot, it's the joystick, okay? Welcome to the F-16. A9 Sidewinder training mission. You are at 12,000 feet in the cell, 30 nautical miles southwest of your home base, Tusia Air Base. The first steps will be to set up your aircraft for air to air combat. When ready to continue, press the spacebar. To set up your F 16 for air to air combat, first ensure Master Arm is on. It should already be in the correct position. Then it is. press the AA button on the when you do so, okay. note that the right MFD should change to the Stores Management SMX page. Use the right MFD, OSB7, to switch between the four A9 Mike that are wing mounted and the two A9 Lima that are wing tip mounted. Both nomenclatures use AIM 9 LM. Okay. Given the engagement's plan, it might be better to use the A9 Limas against the initial non maneuvering targets, but the choice is yours. When ready to continue, press the space bar. Now, look at the left MFD. First, you will keep the radar in range while scan for this training. Finally, use the left MFB OSB 19 to set the radar search range. 10 nautical miles. Right. You are now ready to be in a rear hemisphere A9 engagement. A what? You will need to accomplish the following steps fairly quickly, so take a minute to review them. Okay. King One, Arthur. Find and lock Came a lot. Oh my god. Radar. Two, accelerate and fly towards the target. Three, uncage the A9 seeker. Four, monitor range to the target using the radar, MFD, and HUD. Five, when in range and the missile is locked, sidewinder growl in your headset, shoot the A9. When ready to continue, press the space button. All right, wait, hold on. What is cage lock unlock? I need to adjust the controls here. Uh, what is the cage button? Cage, uncage switch. It is not bound. Oh, because it's bound on the throttle. Okay, so the uncage. Let's use U as the uncage switch for now. flying uh note that the dynamic launch zone dlz on the right side of the flying radar is fairly small wait i just this saw him where'd he go you and the target are traveling in the same direction i just saw him. a low closure line. however notice the ir seeker's growl indicating that it can readily detect the target's hot engine exhaust regardless of the missile's ir lock it is best to close to inside the maximum range versus maneuvering target bracket on the DLZ. Where'd he go? There he is. Loud. I need it 
to scream. Fox two. Okay, that screaming was good. However, he did not go down. So we're going to push forward. Our missile just exploded with no effect. Like, he's right there. Did I hit him? go okay so there's not a whole lot of range on there good job before you begin the next engagement mimic the voice range to which voice there was no tts for that king arthur came a lot didn't he no there was also oh. take a look at the a9s remaining using the sms on the right end of the game when ready to continue press the space button. wait me to do? And then the Smiz page. Smiz. Inventory. I have three AIM-9s right now. Get ready to begin a forward hemisphere aim line engagement. A what? Again, you will need to accomplish the following steps fairly quickly. So review them now. One, find and lock the target on the radar. Two, fly towards the target. Three, uncage the aim line seeker. Four, monitor range to the target using the radar MFV and HUD. Five, when in range and the missile is locked, side on your ground your headset. Shoot the A9. Note, a higher closure rate in a forward hemisphere nose on nose engagement means that things will happen much faster. Be ready for that. What? Likewise, the IR secret will take longer to detect the heat of the target. The DLZ on the HUD oh and radar display will be much bigger as the closure rate is much higher. When ready to continue, press the space bar. All right, we gotta find it. There it is. Nope, I lied, that was a speck on my monitor. I can't see shit.
What am I fighting? I don't know how to use the radar. Maybe I should learn how to use the radar first. Did I already pass it? Oh, is that it? Look, there's a dot. Oh, it's closing fast. Dot is behind me. Where'd the dot go? are too old for this shit. Okay, is there a... Okay, is there a radar? I know how to use the Hornet radar. I know how to use the fucking radar in, in the other one. I do not know how to use the radar in the F-16. I was going to say, I know the Thunderbolt radar. I know the Hornet radar. I do not know the Hornet, or I do not know the F-16 radar. I have no idea how to use the radar in this thing. Is there a radar? There is not. There is... There is no radar tutorial. Let's just go to bombs. Let's just go to bombs. Magnifying glass? I don't I just don't know how to use the radar. I know it in the F-18 and I know it in the A-10. I just don't know how to use it here. So let's bomb things instead. Today we're going to start dropping some unguided bombs. Yeah. This can be delivered in several different modes, but in this lesson we'll look at oh. the continuously computed impact point. We are going to drop our bomb. loads. We'll also look at the store's management set, or SMS page on the MFDs, and cover items there that apply to all bombing modes. It's the same as the Hornet? Diddy it's not. It's definitely not. Bombs loaded on tours on Station 3 and 7 for a total of six. These replicate the ballistics of a Mark 82 and are equipped with the spotting chart so you can see their impact point on the ground. I have the lesson paused, ready to roll in on targets to our left. First though, let's set the aircraft up for the attack. Yeah. Press spacebar to continue. Okay. First, 
press the air to ground master mode button on the ICP. This configures the fire control system and displays for air to ground attack. The radar is displayed on the left MFD and the SMS page is displayed on the right MFD. Next, verify the master arm switch is in the arm position. This allows weapons to be released normally. If the master arm switch is placed in the off position, weapons release is inhibited. The third, simulate position, allows training with all indications you get with the switch in arm, but no weapons are released. Now let's look at the right MFD and the SMS page. The top left shows the operating mode, air to ground, and sub mode, CCIP. The sub mode may be changed by depressing the adjacent OSB and selecting a new sub mode from the menu. You may also depress the missile step button on your stick to cycle through available modes. Try it now if you would like, but set it back to CCIP for the remainder of the lesson. Press spacebar to continue. The right side of the display shows the selected weapons and details about how they'll be released. Yeah. You can see that we have six BDU-33s loaded. If other air-to-ground weapons were loaded, they could be selected by depressing the adjacent OSB until their source code were displayed. Just below that, we have the weapons release profile, with profile 1 selected by default. Selecting the adjacent OSB cycles between two options, profile 1 and profile 2. These include typical settings for delivery mode, fuse arming option, release pulses, impact spacing, and release interval. Changes to settings made while the profile is selected are saved there for later use. These should typically be set or verified as part of aircraft startup. It's not just they can point be changed boom. at any time. We'll work with profile one that's already set up for CCIP delivery. Okay. Press space bar to continue. The next three options will make more sense taken out of order, so let's start at the bottom with the release pulse, or RP setting. This sets the number of release pulses sent to the weapon stations when the weapons release button on the stick is depressed. For example, a yeah, setting of rebel. one sends one pulse yeah, yeah, at okay, a time, I get this. a setting of four I under I understand four pulses this. at a time. More than one pulse is get this. as this a is ripple the same. release. To change the setting, depress the OSB, Type in the desired number of release pulses using the OSBs on the left and right of the display, then select Enter. You can correct numbers entered in error by selecting Recall, or return to the SMS page without making any changes by selecting Return. For now, leave this set to 1 yeah, yeah. so we release one bomb at a time. Agreed. Press space bar to continue. Next, we can set the desired release interval if yep. more than one bomb is to be released. Yep, I get it. The timing between release pulses is computed by the aircraft to space multiple weapons in a stick along the ground at the specified You can never distance, get through the instructions? It's really not that bad. 999 feet. Again, this is changed by selecting the OSB, typing in the new impact spacing look how, distance look how close using the OSBs on the left and right of the display, then selecting Enter. This setting has no effect if only one bomb or one pair of bombs is released, so let's leave it at the default of 10 feet. Press spacebar to continue. Then above that, we had the option to release bombs either singly or in pairs. Yeah. With single selected, bombs will be released from only one station. With pair selected, bombs will be released symmetrically from opposite stations, assuming identical bombs are loaded on both sides. The number of release pulses is also shown next to the single pair option, although that's informational. It was Look already set with the RP OSB below. For this lesson, let's leave it set to single and release one bomb from one side at a time. Yeah. Press space bar to continue. Then on the left side, we have the bomb fusing option. This setting makes sense when you consider that bombs are usually equipped with two fuses, one in the nose and one in the tail. Selecting the adjacent OSB cycles between three options, nose, tail, and nose tail. This is typically set to nose tail for redundancy unless a specific effect unique to one fuse or the other is desired when the weapon detonates. Right. There are also some special cases where the fuse option changes how the weapon behaves after release. For example, setting nose for a Mark D2 air or a snake eye, high drag bomb releases it in a low drag configuration while setting tail or nose tail releases it in a high drag configuration. Now, similarly, setting nose for a CBU-87 or 97 causes bomblets to dispense very shortly after release, while selecting nose tail uses the dispense settings displayed on the MFD. 
this will all make more sense once we get into some different weapons configurations Agreed. and see exactly what this does. Let's leave it set to nose tail for now. Okay. Press space bar to continue. Yeah. Well, that covers the SMS MFD options typical for all unguided bombs. Nice. So now let's look at some unique elements of the HUD that apply to CCIP bombing. That's this thing. Running from the bottom of the flight path marker is the bomb fall line. That's the pepper. uses an alignment aid to stay lined up it's with the a target pepper. when we're making our bombing run. Then at the bottom of the line is the CCIP pepper. This is the computed bomb impact point. The CCIP bombing mode can be described as simply putting the pipper on the target and compressing the weapon's release button on the stick. But of course, the hard part is developing the techniques required to consistently get into the correct position correct. to make that happen. Press space bar to continue. Now, moving back up the bomb fall line, we'll see a small horizontal bar. Yep. This is the time delay cue. It's visible whenever the CCIP pipper is outside the HUD field of view. The distance this is. bar is from the bottom of the HUD is the same distance the CCIP pipper is below the HUD. So as you dive, the cue will drop down the bomb fall line until it reaches the bottom of the HUD, and that's when the CCIP pipper appears. A second post-designate CCIP technique may be used when the paper is still outside the HUD, but that will be covered briefly in the next lesson. Yeah, okay. Press space bar to continue. Okay, I just want to drop a bomb on something. Not shown yet, but very important is the pull-up anticipation cue. Oh my god, I this don't care! It's a stable-shaped symbol that provides Let me drop a, a bomb on representation something. of the altitude required for the bomb fuse to arm, or the altitude to initiate a pull-up to avoid impacting the ground, whichever is most immediate. It moves up towards the flight path marker as the aircraft loses altitude. Releasing a bomb with the flight path marker below the queue will not give the bomb time to arm and will result in a dud. Watch for it as we make our attack, but it should not be encountered in this lesson unless you're much too low. Press space bar to continue. Now that we've covered the basics, it's time to roll in on the target. Look about 45 degrees to the left, just above the canopy rail, and you'll see the target marked with red smoke. That's that. The goal is to place the CCIP pipper on that spot and pickle off your bomb by pressing the weapons release button on your stick. Now this is a deep subject and there are many techniques for getting to the proper point, but I'll describe one way of doing it that you may find useful. Press space bar to continue. I just marked a point 2,000 feet in front of the target with green smoke. We'll call that the aim off distance. When the lesson is unpaused, I want you to bank left and pull the flight path marker to a spot on the ground that far ahead of the target. The aim off distance you choose sets the conditions at release, so this is the most important step to get right. What? Close to the target results in a steeper dive, lower release altitude, and more time to track the target while choosing a point further away shallows out the dive, increases the release altitude, but provides less tracking time. I've chosen a relatively close point of 2,000 feet to give us plenty of time to track the target on the way down, but there's no hard and fast rule here. When the flight path marker is at the aim off distance, leave it there and focus on the bomb fall line. Align the bomb fall line with the target and make small bank corrections with the stick to keep it there. Then, the CCIP pipper tracks up the bomb fall line towards the target. You never want to fly the pipper to the target or hold it on the target using forward stick. Wait for the pipper to intersect the target naturally and release the bomb. Oh. After release, you'll fly a safe escape maneuver to avoid the bomb fragmentation. Now, there are many options, but you can't go wrong with a 5G pull-up to a 30-degree climb. Okay. Now press space bar when you're ready to unpause and give it a shot. I'll talk you through it as we go. Okay, bank left and pull the flight path marker down to the aim off distance. Now align the bomb fall line with the target. Use the smoothest control inputs you can manage. The CCIP pipper should be tracking up the bomb fall line to the target. Pickle when it's over the target. Okay, weapon away. Pull up to a 30 degree climb to avoid the frag. Worry about looking for threats, not following the bomb. No, I want to follow the bomb. Oh, I can't. Oh, I don't even know if I got rid of the bomb. Did I get rid of the bomb? Okay, let's see how we did. 
Yeah. Look for the white smoke that marks the BDU 33's impact point. Don't worry if it's a little off. You have five more loaded and more targets to practice on. Oh, I did pretty You're good. Done. Press escape to win the lesson. I did pretty good there. White smoke is, is my bomb. Red smoke is what I wanted to hit. That's not terrible. All right, let's give it another shot. Not great. Yeah, a little, little further this time. Not terrible, but not great. green one this time? I'm going to aim for the green one this time. Where's the boom? You didn't hear the boom? Technically, these are practice bombs. They're just smoke bombs, basically. We'll, we'll do some real bombs in a minute. This one has you doing practice bombs. Just to kind of learn when to drop stuff. try to hit the green one. Altitude. Altitude. Oh god. Altitude. Altitude. No? Where did they go? Wait, where'd my bombs go? They didn't even detonate. All right, we'll give this another shot. One. 
One, two. Now they're gone. Where's the green? Oh, the green's gone now. All right, I'm gonna say that I hit the green. Altitude over low fuel. Fuel, fuel. This one will say bingo, actually. If the fuel's over, this one will say bingo. Oh, we actually do have another bomb. We have one more bomb. Let's see if we can hit those buildings. Let's grab, what's up, Clark? You just killed the target with a bomb, not a bomb's explosion. It's true, Acme style, it's true. All right, hold on. Let's, cluster bombs. <clears throat> so we'll do cluster bombs instead. These ones, I don't think there is any, you know, uh, fake cluster bombs. So these ones go boom. These ones go very boom. The continuously computed release point CCRP mode provides computed automatic release of bombs. This is usually done with the wings level, but it can also be done in a dive or with a nose high attitude. We have unguided bombs loaded again for this lesson, but this is the primary mode used when dropping laser guided bombs. This mode requires a target point from which to build the bombing solution. Yeah, and these are real bombs. The point as the system point of interest or SPI as we go. These the are great. information will be presented in the HUD and you'll fly the aircraft to the release point. The weapons will automatically release at the proper time to hit the target. These are great. I had the lesson paused with the target. These are ahead. lots of boom. So let's set the aircraft up for the attack. Press spacebar to continue. The setup and displays are the same we've already seen in the CCIP bombing lessons. Press the air to ground master mode button on the ICP to configure for air to ground attack. Then verify the master arm switch is in the arm position. You should have the air to ground SMS page displayed on the right MFD. CCIP submode is selected by default, so let's change that to CCRP. The submode may be changed by depressing the adjacent OSB and selecting a new submode from the menu. You can also depress the missile step button on your stick to cycle through the available oh, really? modes. You could even select oh. profile 2 that is already set up for CCRP. So select CCRP as the submode and press spacebar to continue. Today we have two different types of unguided cluster bombs loaded. Cluster bombs. The CBU-87 and the CBU-97. Yeah. You can cycle between the two by depressing the OSB next to the source code. Try it if you'd like, but leave the CBU-87 selected for now. The CBU-87 is sometimes known as the Combined Effects Munition, referring to the type of bomblet that's dispensed over a wide area when the CBU functions. These bomblets have a fragmenting case for defeating vehicles and personnel, a forward-firing shape charge for defeating light armor, and a zirconium ring for incendiary effect, setting fires and denying use of materiel and fuel stocks. The CBU-97 <laughs> is sometimes known as the sensor-fused weapon. Each bomblet includes a number of smaller warheads, or skeets, that are scattered by a small rocket motor. Each <laughs> skeet then scans for a heat signature matching that of a tank's engine compartment using the passive IR sensor. When the correct signature Basically, is Basically, when these bombs explode, they the explode department. out into a whole bunch of smaller bombs, and then the smaller bombs have continue. rockets on them. 
that detect heat sources and they the smaller bombs rocket at things. We've used all the options on the right side of the MFD in earlier lessons except for a pair release. So to press the OSB next to single until pair is displayed. We have CDU-87s loaded on opposite wing stations, 3 and 7, so this will drop both weapons simultaneously. This is not a bad idea, especially for CDUs, because the probability of a kill increases when more bomblets saturate the target area. One bomb on target could be appropriate, or an entire flight's worth of bombs on a target up, could off. be appropriate. It all depends on how sure of a kill you want to be. Set that up and press spacebar to continue. So we're going to drop two bombs on it. One last piece of information unique to this type of CBU is displayed in the middle of the MFD. The BA, or burst altitude, is the height above ground the bomblets will be dispensed. This is sometimes referred to as the height of function. It's set using a dial on the Fuzzy 39 radar proximity fuse on the nose of the dispenser, and the height displayed on the MFD is set to match. We'll use the default setting of 1500 feet. Now, setting the fusing option to nose tail uses this height, while setting it to nose bypasses the proximity fuse and dispenses the bomblets very shortly after release. The tail setting should never be used, as that will cause the dispenser to dud. Leave it at nose tail and press spacebar to continue. Okay. Now, with the setup complete, let's look at the HUD symbology. The three key features for this mode yep. are the flight path marker, yep. steering line, yep. and solution cube. We've seen the flight path marker in many lessons already. It's the aircraft shaped symbol that shows the direction we're traveling. The steering line runs vertically from the top to the bottom of the HUD. It shows the azimuth we need to fly to line up correctly on the target. The key will be to keep the flight path marker lined up with this line as we approach. The solution cue is the small horizontal line at the top of the steering line. Oh, okay. This will begin to fall down the steering line about 10 seconds prior to release. The bombs will be released when the solution cue reaches the fly path marker, as long as the weapons release button on your stick is held. Press spacebar to continue. Now let's perform the attack. I've marked the turret at steer point one with red smoke, although it will probably be out of sight at release. After all, that's the point of this delivery mode. You should see the target designator box, a small square with a dot in the middle, in your HUD at that location. This replaced the steer point symbol when we entered CCRP sub mode, right and is the point on the ground the bombing solution is computed for. You could, if you wanted, move the location using the cursor enable control on your throttle, but leave it at the steer point for now. We'll look at other ways to update the location in the lessons on targeting pod and radar. Press the space bar when you're ready to unpause and make the attack. I'll talk you through it as we go. Alright. Okay, fly towards the target and keep the fly path marker aligned with the steering line. At the bottom right of the HUD, you'll see the slant range to the target in nautical miles and a countdown to release. We have plenty of time. You don't have to make a long approach like this. You can come in from any angle as long as the fly path marker is aligned with the steering line at release. We're coming up on the release. Depress and hold the weapons release button when the solution cue starts to move down the steering line. The bombs will release when it intersects the flight path marker. Okay, weapons away. You should see the flight path marker flashing to tell you the bombs have dropped. Okay. Release the weapons release button. Use the F6 key to follow the bombs through their dispensing and impact if you wish. If you happen to be at low altitude at release, perform a safe escape maneuver to avoid the fragmentation. Up this high though, take whatever action the threat situation dictates. Press spacebar when you're ready to wrap up. Oh no, what happened? Oh! It stopped following the, the weapons! No! 
I really wish I need to learn the controls. I need to learn the controls. Hold on. Hold on, let me make another let me make another pass. There's where we need to go. Okay, so how do I... No, I want to see the boom! Here we go. See? Booms! See? War crime booms! You can hear it over here. You can hear it. War crime booms. See? War crime booms. Cluster bombs are a really great way to destroy a lot of things you didn't intend. There were booms. I promise there were booms. Here, we'll go back and look at the booms. I don't have any more bombs, but we'll go back and look at booms. If I can find the booms. Altitude. Altitude. It's fine. Altitude. Pull up. Is, yeah, yeah. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Altitude. 
God, there's a lot of clouds. Nothing like doing Mach 1.5 like a hundred feet over Altitude. the ground. One gun ammo. Why did they give me guns? Do 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 gonna shoot down a friendly do 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 just let's just fall right in behind it here. Ah, yes. Guns. Oh, nice. I actually hit it. Hey, it's evading! Chef Flair. Hey, goodbye. I hope you find your dad. Oh, look, they're parachuting out. Chef Flair. I gave him an air show. Look. See? Yay, I dropped flares for them. Can you do real missiles? Yeah, we can do real missiles. I'll have to learn how to actually do uh, the radar, because radar, I mean, real missiles. You have committed fratricide. You have lost all your combat scores. Whoops. Whoopsie. I've already committed fratricide. This is Syria ground attack easy. So we'll see what it does. I don't know what plane. Um. Uh oh.
Uh... Our troops are under heavy fire from enemies in the town. Do what you can to provide support until the A-10s arrive. Exactly planning on being in a helicopter. Especially when I don't know. And this is a Huey. This is like. Let's try going in really low so they can't fire at us, right? That's how that works. Uh-oh. I don't really have control anymore. Oh, I don't have control. Oh, I have no... Oh, I'm dead! No, oh, never mind. I'm dead. My helicopter's on fire and I'm dead. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to be in a helicopter. Uh... I don't know... Okay, alright. We can't do that mission, I guess. Alright, we can't do that mission. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. I selected the helicopter. See, what happened is, is I selected the helicopter, and then I was surprised that it put me in a helicopter. You smell good. You're very pretty. I smell good? Yeah. What do I smell like? You smell like a yazzle. What does that smell like? Pretty. Does it smell like dirty laundry and refried beans? <laughs> no, but I am hungry. Because <laughs> I, I had cooked beans and rice. <laughs> so you're like, you smell good. I'm like... Well, now I'm, now I'm hungry. You know, it's kind of like... Are you streaming? Yes. Okay. So I was like, the other day when I farted, and you're like, what smells good? <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know why. Like something what smelled, smells good. Something smelled like food. <laughs> it was my fart. You're terrible. <laughs> no, I couldn't stop laughing. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? I don't love you anymore. We're getting a divorce. <laughs> too late. <laughs> it's not too late. Uh, do you want me to heat or anything? Wait, what? Hold on. Do I want what? Do you want any tea or anything? Oh, I really want Diet Coke. No. Not but yes, I want there. tea. Wait, what? Did you make a clip? 
Wait, you can make a clip? Did they enable clips on my channel? Teabagging. With the sound effect. Listen, do you hear it? I can hear you teabagging, yes. It's like a slobber Oh, it's... Screen masking at very low altitude to ingress the target area. It's a snowstorm. Altitude. Altitude. Oh. Uh oh. We're not. We're actually not low enough. Altitude. 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 Oh, now we're too low. Alright. Okay, we're blowing up a tri dock. Those little beeps are enemy radar getting a hold of me. Oh, it's very hard to see anything. Altitude. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. What's going on? No? Uh I don't know what one you're talking about. That's not my wire, that's the one to the Oh, that goes to the pump. Hey, you're gonna wanna yeah, well, plug that back in. Yeah, you wanna plug that back in. Start turning in.
Huh? No. Altitude. Altitude. At least I don't think so. Alright, we're coming up on, I think, my target? Which I can't see. Oh, it's there. And pickle. And pickle. One. Oh, I hit something! Things we did wrong. Okay, so things we did wrong. Um, well, for one, we got shot down. Fail. Two, when I got past the target, I got hit by my own bomb. You are Dodge 1, when single F-16 tax with sinking the Kilo SS and its dry dock. Oh, okay, we're, we're actually aiming for a boat. Oh, we're aiming for, like, a submarine. Drain masking and very low altitude to ingress the target area. Okay. Let's try that again. Wow, the rain really makes it, like, way more intense. Altitude. Altitude.
Crap, I don't know where my target is. Hold on. I don't know which one my target is on. And I don't see flight path markers on this one. Altitude. Altitude. Okay, yeah, we're coming up this way. Okay. Pull up. on the wrong steer point again. Hold on. That's the right steer point. Oh, oh, we're a little low. We're like 30 feet off the ground. All right, we are two minutes and eight seconds out, apparently. There's our, there's our marker. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Yeah. Yeah. really high-pitched whine earlier. No, that sounds okay. Yeah. Alright, hold on a second. I don't care if I get shot. I gotta know. Winchester, Mark 84.
Did I get it? Okay. Did I get it? Oh no! Oh, I missed the boat by like 15 feet! Oh, I missed the boat by like 15 feet! Oh, well, I mean, a little bit more than 15 feet. I guess I hit... I hit all that. Oh, it was so close! I was this close! Failure, you missed the target. I was this close! Yeah, we noticed that earlier. I got, I killed the truck next to it and all of those buildings. I killed all of those buildings and the truck next to it. But not the boat. Huh? Oh. All right, we'll try it one more time. I was so close. All right, we're going to try to drop all four at once this time. Oh, this would have been nice. Oh, I might have blown up a mosque. That's probably not good. I probably shouldn't blow up a mosque, huh? Okay. Use drain masking and very low altitude to ingress the target area. Air to ground. HSD. Pair. Alright, so we'll drop a pair. In CCRP. I came this close to blowing up that submarine. I was like 50 feet off my mark for the bombs.
We are theoretically three minutes out. We are 90 feet off the water doing 600 knots. That's, that's fast and low. That's very fast and very low. We're doing Mach 1 a hundred feet off the ground. What? Not over the ocean. Well, and not over the ocean and enemy combatants. We're flying over the enemy. Who gives a shit, right? Well, that's true. Pull out, pull out, pull out. Whoop it. What'd you say? That's an air bus. The first time that did that to me, I was just like, the fuck? <laughs> no, I mean, but it was also just one of those, like, you called me, what now? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to Yazzle and I crashed into the side of a mountain. <sighs> All right, we're gonna do it this time. All right, we're gonna do it. We're actually gonna do it this time. Air to ground mode. Drain masking at very low altitude to ingress the target. Pair CCRP HSD. What? We're good. We got it this time. And let's... Yeah, let's grab you. Uh... It's fine. Yes, I really smashed that mountain. Altitude. Altitude. I Pull smashed up. that mountain so Pull hard. Up. There's a boat over there. Pull up.
All right. I can't decide between telling a proctology joke or a neurology joke. Flip a coin, heads or tails. Ha ha sweat, ha ha balls, ha ha sweat, ha ha balls. I don't know why the thing isn't reading out stuff. To oh. I know why it's not reading out stuff tonight. I think I muted it. Ha ha sweat, ha ha balls. Replay? I don't think I can. It's hard to replay the YouTube ones. We're not gonna crash. Who just messaged me? It's not Yasmin. Altitude. 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 We are a minute out.
I hit shit on both sides. Both sides. Did you guys see that missile? Hold on. Did you guys see that missile? That, like, I, I like, pulled out and you could see it coming right for me. Use drain masking and very low altitude to ingress the target. Missile City? Hold on, we're gonna try Missile City. We're gonna try the mission Missile City. I have to know. Alright. The Missile City site is... Okay, here we go. Iran has established an underground offshore missile cities all along the coast of the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman that would be a nightmare for Iran's enemies. In the time since Iran's missile cities announcement, a thinly veiled threat to the close the Strait of Hormuz, intelligence has gathered the is located the Iranian un, Iranian Iranian underground missile city facility on the Gulf of Oman coast. The site consists of two coastal defense cruise missiles, CDCM launch positions, all connected to the tunnels dug into a ridge line. Each of these can handle two CDCM launchers. The missiles are kept. It's virtually impossible to damage or destroy the radars and missile launcher equipment while they are safely inside the underground Missile City facility. To take out Missile City, it must be actively engaging shipping with its missiles and radar run outside. A bold plan has been formulated. An early morning convoy is headed into the Strait of Hormuz, escorted by the Turkish FFG-46. The civilian ships will fake a navigation error and stray into Iranian warners while the FFG-46 will remain clear. While civilian ships are permitted to enter territorial waters under international law in the past, has acted the NATO, this time they will be ready. I am Colt-21, a flight leader of a pair of F-16s, both armed with AGM-65Ks. Your primary target is the CDM fire control radar. I actually don't know how to do this. Should any Silkworm missiles launch before their radar or launchers are taken out of action, you may attempt to shoot them down only after you've completed your primary mission. You want me to shoot down a missile? Well, that ain't gonna happen. The convoy is nearing Iranian waters. Maintain low altitude under Iranian radar until the missile city becomes active. Those are Mavericks. Okay, do I have a target? Oh. One, NATO four, six. Convoy is inside Iran territorial waters. Overlord one one on station at falls two two eight four one hundred twenty at twenty four thousand. I don't know where I'm going. Oh. Call to one. Overlord one. Alert. Iranian air defenses have detected cold flight. All right.
Oh, what did I just do? Oh, that's... Oh, it's a gun. No tracer rounds on that one, though. I'm sorry, what now? All right, we are slipping in between two. Okay. What? Why is this going the opposite direction of the way that I'm pushing? Neat. Oh, what? Honestly, kind of don't know what I'm Altitude. looking for. Also, my control is wrong. 236.9. All right, look, at this point, I'll just be happy if I can find the thing I'm supposed now, to attack. Contact target, one o'clock, four seven. One o'clock, point seven. Where is it? How do I make you soy? Altitude. 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 Call to one. Needle for six. Missile launch. Hell. Earthquake. Six o'clock. I don't know. 
know how to make that thing sway. Fuck. There's not a whole lot of terrain to mask behind here. Altitude. Altitude. You soy! No button works! Oh my god, let me make you soy. Oh, you're soy! F-16 I made as a two-seater? Oh my god. Well, it doesn't help. For some reason, I don't know how to... Okay. Alright. You know what? Alright. I need... Hold on. I need to make sure that this is actually bound. None, none of my throttles bound. All right, radar cursor. Uh, I actually need uncaged switches there. Yep. Okay, hold on. Axis commands. Oh my god, having a having a freaking uh, WSO uh, is so nice. It is. It's so nice. Is there no radar? Radar cursor, here we go. X and Y uh, throttle. Y axis. X axis. Okay. Okay. And then I need to know... Uh, stick. Control stick, hide, show, show, hide. Display management switch, DMS. Okay, so let's, let's see what we got. DMS down, left, right, up. Down, left, right, up. That's good. Okay. Uh, TMS, left, down, up right okay i just don't know how to do it i guess left went down nose up yes your nws misstep expand fob depress paddle switch depress okay okay Ships. Hill, three o'clock. 
All right. So hold on, you are two, engage defensive. FOB, good. And you're cage. Two, sand launch, two o'clock. Uncage. Two, sand launch, one o'clock. Two, sand launch, three o'clock. Two, engage defensive. Two, sand launch, nine o'clock. Two, engage defensive. Oh my god, give me an A-10 any day. Yeah, give me an A-10 any freaking day. Oh, I don't know how to use Mavericks in this. Oh, it doesn't matter. We were about to get shot down anyway. <sighs> All right. All right. First things first. I actually... That's great. The clamp for my throttle holder just broke. And so my throttle's been flying around this entire time. Oh my god, it's really broke. I don't know how to fix this. fix that. There's a metal pin that sheared off of my joystick mount. Ah. Oh. There's a metal pin that just sheared off my joystick mount. So, all right. I'm going to call stream on that. I'm going to see if I can do what I can do to fix this. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. All right. Good night, guys. Be on Discord. Discord.gg. Good night.